coming up on the left hand side when it's live. Right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 298. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked. Um, in um, the uh, SEO Questions uh, Facebook group and also um, on the, um, sorry, the SEO Questions group on Google Plus and the dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Sorry about that. With us tonight, we have uh, Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. Um, he's a, a Google top contributor in the, in the Google My Business community. And uh, also we have George G. Oh, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. And George G. Uh, George uh, is uh, proud to call himself an SEO. He's based in Bulgaria. By G. We just had a look at his new offices. Gee, they were great. All right, uh, our first uh, question tonight um, is titled um, Rank the Category Pages of an E-Commerce Shop. It's from Tim Bernhardt. Um, Tim said, hey, everyone, what is your opinion about the following situation? Um, the plan is to rank the category pages of an e-commerce shop. Hence, uh, the idea is to put um, um, content uh, uh, on the category pages, H1 and a small paragraph at the beginning of uh, the category page, and H2, uh, H3 and more text at the bottom after the products. Currently, I'm hearing a lot about building cluster pages slash content silos. Within the bottom text, I want to include internal links to related topics slash sites of the given category. Um, would it make more sense to set these uh, set up these internal sites within a blog or as child sites of the categories? For example, category one slash related topic one, category one slash related topic two. I won't try and keep up with the rest. He said, to me, uh, option one seems to be more plausible. I would really appreciate any input or other ideas. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, from Tim Bernhardt. Yeah, um, I think you're kind of overthinking it, Tim. <laughs> uh, you know, a category and what you're reading about silos and clusters, it's literally essentially you know, your category and then products within your category um, or products, you know, or products within that. Don't don't overthink it. That creates a natural silo anyway. Um, yeah. You know, if you if you obviously the 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 title of the category in an H1, that's preferable. Um, and, you know, an introduction to the user on what they can find on the page, um, what uh, you know, uh, if you need to lead them through something, uh, let's say it's a bit, I don't know, you've got some kind of tricky thing where, I don't know, people have to select by the length of a ship sail or something like that, you know, explain to them how they need to pick it or if it's a triangle or whatever. But, yeah, just give an introduction into it. Ideally, what you want to be doing is linking from your content you pr create for the user into that main category as such not necessarily out to the other yeah, you can link it to other things but ideally what you want to do is create uh you know you think about your content in the sense that that content's there is to identify a user's uh in a, in a user in his journey of making a purchasing decision so he might be like um I want to buy, uh, you know, uh, a kite. Um, so, you know, or what is the best kite? Or how um, how can, can I use this kite um, with a go-kart? Or, you know, you know, all these kind of user particular queries. 
that's where you want to be looking at your content to satisfy, satisfy the user's intent. And then once you've answered his question, you can then take him to the particular products or that particular category. Um, yeah, but I mean, I would go with your option one, which is, you know, at the, the, you know, at the, the actual theme and the child and um, a logical, a, a logical um, process through that. Um, H1, yes, H2, because you can do that. But just remember, um, you know, if you look at Amazon, there's like about 57 H1s on an Amazon product page. It's not necessarily H1s in that. It's about literally uh, using, uh, but, you know, it's literally having a good product, providing information on that product, and, um, and answering questions that users may have about that product. And then, obviously, once you've answered that question, um, you know, whether this is the good one, this is the bad one, which is the best size, which is the which is the tougher model, which is the, uh, which is the domestic model, or whatever the case may be, then take them through to the particular product. Hopefully, you've convinced them to make the sale by this point, or you've, you've convinced them that your product is a brilliant product, uh, maybe even videos showing them how it works, literally, you know, providing a good user experience, and then just taking them to the product. Hopefully you've convinced them to, to, to purchase it and then they will purchase it. So, yeah, I, I mean, I hope that answered your question. I'm sure George has got um, something to weigh in there on, um, particularly on e-com. Well, uh, I agree with what Tim said, uh, pretty much the whole thing, except I'll go with option two. I would create a block and uh, in this block, I would create categories because it just makes sense. I mean, in the in the shop, I'll just sell the products, and then in the blog, I'll write about the pro the products. So uh, basically, if you um, if you're sell if you're selling, let's say, motorcycle helmets or whatever product, and uh, everything that that Tim said uh, applies here, just write about it. I mean, write, write how to buy it, how to use it, how to maintain it and stuff like that, but put it in the block and put it in the category in the block. And from there, just link to the category on the shop that you want to, um, that you want to rank. And um, I would just link out from those articles to the category where you want to rank because that makes sense. And I wouldn't put the links uh, to the block on the category page in the shop. Um, because that doesn't make sense. I mean, you should just have links to the actual products there and to the buying options because this is what you want. This is what you want to sell. And uh, from your blog, feel free to to, to link to your um, to your category page on the shop. This will make supporting content. And um, this is what I see in uh, a lot of big websites. A lot of um, uh, big e-commerce like RevZilla, let's say it's a big brand in the motorcycle helmets. So what they do, they have a great blog about, let's say they have uh, probably 50 articles about motorcycle helmets and they all link to the best motorcycle helmets on their shop. And uh, this ranks really well in Google right now. It's I think it's position one or position two, something like that. So that's what works and that's what I suggest. Thank you, George. Thank you, Tim. All right, I think Tim's got uh, uh, Tim Bernhardt uh, has uh, got a really good set of answers. Uh, I also should uh, point out um, the um, forum heroes that answer questions um, through the week. Um, people like um, Michael Stricker, um, Jennifer Antoon. Um, and also uh, Michael Martin has uh, chipped in on this one. All right, uh, let's um, move on to the next. This one uh, from Neil Cheeseman. It's titled, What Should a Good Site Title Be? Uh, on a Word WordPress site. Um, for example, should it be the domain name? Can a site title be over-optimised unintentionally? 
is a site title used by search engines in rankings. I can't appear to find any reference to it in Google's uh, starter guide. Um, that's about it. That's, that's his question. Tell us about the site title. Well, um, Neil, as you, you, you've probably noticed that if you don't add your the, the 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 brand name or the or the name of the business in the very beginning of the title google switches that over now a lot of people used to keep it at the end in the title together with the other ones but you probably notice that google switches it so you may as well just have your brand name in the very beginning and then what i tend to recommend is to have your elevator statement so every business kind of you know they might let's say they sell windows for example all different types of windows brands or businesses typically over the years have developed some kind of elevator statement about who they are and if this is your if this is your home page that's where you would typically use it so it's something like uh, i don't know you know uh, they've developed a brand kind of name for themselves something like never knowingly undersold windows or, or something. I would typically use that because that is what, what your brand is uh, known for. People often search for a brand that they remember, uh, things like this. And I would typically have that on my homepage. For internal pages, which, which is categ you know, categories, whether these are Velux windows, you know, um, obviously you're going to have what the product is. It's Velux Windows. Um, and then I would also use something which, again, is a, is a um, you, you know, a unique selling point. These might be triple glazed. So Velux Windows, triple glazed, and then finish off with your brand name. Uh, you don't really have much option in terms of character limits to go insane and write crazy things in, in a title. But typically with the home page, I always tend to, if the brand has developed an elevator statement or like Nike, you know, Nike is just do it. And all these other things they've developed over the time, an elevator pitch. And I would normally use that um, on the home page title. Internal pages, you can, you you have a little bit more flexibility, but that's what I tend to do for the homepage because that's what it's known for. And that's what they advertise. That's what they use in all their branding, their marketing. So it makes sense to have it uh, there for me. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's um, move on to the next. I'm sure uh, Neil will be happy with that. Um, this one is from JL Favario, who asks, uh, what in the world is Google Optimize? Uh, is anyone using that? See, Dave Elliott um, um, answered that question. Dave Elliott said it's an A-B testing platform, a bit weighty on the page, and there is better available. It's free, though, and he likes the way it integrates with Google Analytics. He hasn't used the premium version. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, we'll call Dave an answer. Yep. All right, this one for another one from Neil Cheeseman on the use of href lang and html lang. Um, re the use of href lang, the language setting in WordPress is set to either UK or US, uh, resulting in html lang equal to en gb or html lang equals en us. However, if a website um, is aimed at all English speaking visitors and there are two or more language versions on the web, then the 
English uh, hreflang would be hreflang equals en. Does it matter that the site language is HTML lang en dash gb and the hreflang uh, is different, uh, i.e. Um, hreflang equals en. Um, good heavens, i.e. WordPress site equals and the hreflang two of minus one linking. Good heavens, what's what's he saying here? Okay, well, generally in WordPress, you you select your look your 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 locale, which then is reflected in your H, in your HTML language. So you can set to the GB or you know US or whatever the case may be, which would conflict with the href lang that he's implementing as such. I think that's what he's trying to say. What? I would question is why is an all English site trying to to do language pages in freaking US English or Australian English or uh, you know it's literally the same written word um, with a few nuances I, I would r really question that uh, and oh yeah I mean to give you give you an example my my search console <laughs> search console I've got my site set at um, at the UK I've got obviously in my site it's uh, ENGB I don't have any other language pages but essentially I'm telling all my signals are telling Google that uh, I'm UK wide you know, I'm in the UK. However, 70% of my traffic and all my positions are in the US, purely because the content that I provide is typically searched for and looked for and more read by the US. Um, so even though I'm telling Google everything that, listen, I work in the UK, not, you know, most of all, all my readers um, uh, and visitors are in the US. I, be, I, I haven't read a any particular study saying that a UK uh, ENGB site providing a service that's in the US, creating a, an ENUS language page is going to rank any better <laughs> with an hreflang enus page than that actual uh, gb page i have not seen anything um on that but i'm assuming to me that if it's good enough in terms of what you're selling or what that product is whether it be you know if it's that product and it's written in english if it's good enough it will be shown wherever you're right, Tim. I, I don't think I've. Well, I know I haven't seen anything uh, like that. All right. So, um, will we move on to the next? Yeah, sure. I just want to add that, uh, in my opinion, Google just ignores that. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. English is English. So, whatever you set it up, it, it's not a problem. There are much stronger signals for the for the bot to evaluate where it should display a content and uh, this is not one of them yeah all right let's um go to the next uh, number five on our run list uh, from uh, neil cheeseman um international targeting in google search console Neil said, with, with a co.uk uh, website that, um, co.uk, okay, um, that might attract more visitors from the UK, but also has customers from worldwide English speaking countries, US, Canada, Australia, etc. Should the international targeting in uh, Google Search Console be left blank or set to UK? 
<laughs> well, I, I think I answered that in the previous one when I mentioned it. Uh, just, just leave it at international. You can set it at the UK if you want. You can set it at whatever you want. It doesn't make a jot of difference. If your content on that page is the, the better content, Google will serve that to the US, the UK, Australia, wherever. If that is the best piece of content, it will serve it in no matter where. As I said before, I switched mine to the UK in Search Console ages ago. It's kind of a little test thing, and it hasn't made a jot of difference. 70% of all my traffic still comes from the US because those are the people that are primarily searching for the stuff that I provide um, and write about. Um, it ranks pretty much exactly the same on .co.uk, uh, you know, uh, .com for the US, and even uh, for to Australian readers. Uh, it's, it, it may fluctuate maybe one position if someone in a more local area is searching from, from specifically New York and they're looking for something specifically New York related about how to remove a review, for example, then I might be position number two rather than position one if it was a general country search. It's not gonna make a jot of difference. Just, you might as well just leave it at what it is at international. But if you wanted to send it to UK, it won't make a difference either. As okay, so for this one, it's uh, first first thing that I want to say is that uh, it's a country TOD, so it's set up in Search Console automatically. He, you cannot change that. I mean, you're targeting that country. Uh, that being said, that the UK is, in, you know, it's English. Um, Google delivers results locally. So um, it really depends on the searcher's intent. If, it, if, it's, um, if, if the searcher is looking for something internationally, it doesn't really matter where the domain comes from. But uh, let's say, for example, if, if somebody is in the UK and uh, he's looking for web hosting, uh, domains with uh, .co.uk and with uh, English content will rank better, uh, especially if he, if, if he searches for UK web hosting or something like that. Uh, same goes with Australia. Uh, just because Google knows that people in uh, Australia would prefer Australian hosting simply because the, the servers and uh, everything else in Australia will work much better for the Australian customers than, let's say, a uh, data center in Chicago. Because obviously that, that will, not, will not work for them. So uh, it really depends on the searcher intent and uh, how local the search is. But for uh, global and international searches, it's really the language. So if it's English, it doesn't really matter if, it, if, if it's co-uk or if it's uh, a .k or whatever, it will rank in the search just the same way. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Let's um, go to the next. Uh, this one is from Mike Collins. Uh, it's titled Canonical Links Juice. I think he's confusing something somewhere. Uh, Mike said, hello, I want to make sure I'm understanding canonical links correctly. Let's say I post an article on my blog site, site A, and it gets syndicated by a bigger site, uh, site B, with a canonical link back to uh, the article on my site. Another site, uh, site C, uh, links to the article on site B. Does the link juice from site C's link to site uh, B flow to my site, site A? Uh, yeah, it would. Um... Uh, yeah, if if you know if site B is has created a canonical link um, back to yours as the as the source of the article, the reference to it, uh, which would be very surprising because most, if somebody's say, you know quoting it, um, normally they would just have an actual link in and not a canonical link. But um, but yeah, in theory that would. But ultimately, it does lose a little bit of and I hate this word, link juice, uh, it ultimately does lose a little bit. It's like, um, you know, it, lo it loses some of it uh, in with 301 redirects, even internally on a site. Um, 
not a heck of a lot, just a tiny little bit. You know, it's always better for a direct link rather than you know, and, and because it may, it's, it it is just better. But in theory, it would yes. Um, but you know, this link juice stuff just does my head in. I mean. I mean for me, I wouldn't even care about link juice. My, my thing is how much traffic that's bringing me. How many people have come from that article to me to buy my product? That's what I want. I, I never care about links, link juice whatsoever. If, I, if I'm going to be mentioned somewhere, um, I want that traffic to flow because I want traffic, I want sales, or I want whatever my particular site, my conversions are. Um, that's what I want. So, uh, I mean... Trying to analyze this, Mike, is just there's so many other better things to be really thinking about. Um, but you know, it's a valid thing to wonder if it would. Yes, I think it would. I don't think there's going to be any like sort of devaluation between um, you know the, the way it's done. But ideally, why don't you just reach out to if somebody if somebody you know if this had happened to you, why don't you reach out to someone? That, that that link to site C and say, hey, you know, we're, we're the originator here. Would you would you mind just linking to the original article and not to these guys? That would that would be my logical choice if this had happened, and I was trying to figure out what's what's going on. Um, that would be my logical one. Um, and you could broach it to the, when you reach out to them. Just just say why. Um, you think it would be better for the users? Thank you so much for linking to this article. Um, however, we found that a couple of users have actually not followed through because it links to, to the same article, and then they still have to follow through to us to buy the product. Would you mind directly linking to us? You know, solve problem solved, and and it makes and it makes better sense for the for their users who they are recommending you to go and see. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Uh, what I think here is uh, what what Tim said is exactly correct. Like, you gotta reach out and tell to the people to link to you. That's always the best thing, like direct links. But what this guy here asked is, uh, I think he's confusing two things, uh, which are totally different. One is canonical links, and the other is link juice. So the link juice. Okay, let's uh, let's answer the first one. The link juice will pass from page B to page C, uh, actually to his page, even, even if they link to the, to, to, the, to the site A, it will still pass to, to site C, that, that's how link juice works. Uh, the canonical is totally different thing and that, that will tell Google which is the original document and uh, which document it should, it should rank in the search. So. Uh, Basically, it will tell Google don't don't rank that document on this side, but rank this document on that side. So this is the original source, and uh, these are two separate things. So um, yes, the links will pass, but the canonical is used for another pur purpose, and this is uh, to tell to tell Google not to index that page on this side, but to point to the original content. That that's all about it. Thank you, George. Okay, let's um, go to the next. It's number seven on our run list. Uh, it's another one from Neil Cheeseman, who's keeping us in business tonight. Um, he said, uh, can the uh, RHEL short link um, be an SEO problem uh, in Google? I don't think, uh, I, I honestly don't know wh wh why you would think that. Um, all right, let me just, uh, um, yeah, go ahead. It's probably come up. It's probably come up because it was, a, I think, yeah, I'm sure like last year or something in one of, John Mew said something about they ignore rel short links. Um, oh, hang on there. Look, yeah. 
um chris chris yeah we'll go um chris uh, simmons yeah he's got the article there um but yeah uh depends yeah look um so john you says they ignore them Yeah, I just found the tweet and John you said that, that Google ignores those. Okay, that uh, your answers, guys, um, uh, coupled with um, the answers from Christopher Fishback uh, near um, Christopher uh, and What's going on? Chris Simmons um, and Michael Martinez um, should be sufficient uh, for Neil. All right, uh, let's go to the next. This one from Cassie Richardson. Um, you'll notice, George, that Tim normally answers the ones um, that look like there might be a girl in the profile. Tim never met a girl he didn't like. Anyway, Kathy um, has asked a question titled uh, Negative Impacts of Combining Three Businesses on One Domain. She said there is a parent organisation with um, one domain uh, with high domain authority and has two separate businesses, different products, market customers, although slightly related, each with their own separate website. Um, I learned today that the client uh, is thinking about combining everything on the main domain. I'm not sure if it would be a subfolder or a subdomain. Hmm. Um, what are the possible negative impacts of combining three businesses on one domain if organized appropriately? Wouldn't it be better to keep them all separate since they are three separate businesses, but linked to each other for a good user experience. Yeah, so look, I mean, there has to be a reason why this owner wants to do it. He has to have some logical kind of reason. He's not gonna take three separate businesses that are performing well and go, you know, ask him, Cassie, seriously, ask them, what, what, what is your intention, why? Are they rebranding as a whole into one? Because uh, ideally, they're going to have to rebrand. If these are two, if these are completely three separate business, Jim's Plumbing, Bob's Electrical, and 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 Cassie's Baking, you know, three separate businesses into which domain? Firstly, that that in that scenario would not make one jot of sense, but the way you've described it, a business, three separate businesses, there must be some kind of branding involved in that, that would allow them to merge the three into the one. So I'm assuming it, 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 it kind of makes sense. But now from an SEO point of view, um, if the branding allows it, it and, and this is a business, and I see it all the time in terms of you have um, the actual, you, you have the actual business side of it that does the installation. You have the showroom side of things that do slightly different. You know, one will do Windows, one will do HVAC, and one will do um, um, the electrical side of the things. Although three separate, separate kind of entities, it's still the same business and it makes sense. And you can still have it and, and have it running off one side um which isn't a problem because a user comes in and they present it with three options which do you want the electrical the showroom or the or the window section the user goes i want the window section 
And on the Windows section, that is where you host all that content, um, you know, within 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 that uh, subfolder. And then the electrical, they go and click onto electrical, forward slash electrical, and that's where all that content is. You see this all the time in terms of hotels, right? You, you know, you've got a Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn's got 500 properties. Not all of them the same. They're in different locations. They offer different things. One offers weddings. One offers conferences. One doesn't. So it's not a problem in one in one thing. In fact, from from a branding point of view, it makes complete sense. It makes absolute complete sense from a branding point of view. So that's why I ask you, there has to be some way of a reason or some branding uh, that they bring in these into one, um, which probably makes sense from the business point of view. So I would you know i would go back and, and and see what the situation is but if it's like i said before bob's plumbing and 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 and, and jim's electrical and 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 casey's and, and casey's um cooking then that would be extremely weird um unless they were putting it onto a brand new branded domain and bringing it all into one and not calling it bob and jim and cassie anymore <clears throat> it would just be X brand electrical plumbing and 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 and, and cooking. Um, so you know there has to be kind of a reason there. Um, but yes, it's entirely possible. It's done all the time. It works very successfully with a large brand with multiple entities. Not a problem. Uh, you just need to manage that. Thank you, Tim. Go ahead, George. Yeah, SEO wise, it's, it's not a problem. As Tim mentioned, that's that's purely a branding decision. So uh, they have to decide if they want to move with it from the customer perspective, and that's about it. SEO wise, it's it's implementable, so it, it's not a problem, and it won't hurt their rankings if it's done correctly. I mean, the the trail one redirects and everything else. Thank you, George. Thank you, Mr. Kappa. All right, our next uh, question is from Eric M. Hoover. It's about mega domains and impact on search. Not, sh not sure uh, what he means there. Anyway, he said, how do we feel about mega domains on impact in search, crawling, etc." I am not for them, honestly, i.e. brandsite.com versus brandparentcompany.com slash brandsite. I see Michael Martin has uh, said that um, he's done it uh, both ways. Um, he said either approach has its strengths and weaknesses. The organisational decision-making can be the worst part of the deal. Even when I ran my own mega site with a volunteer staff of 30 or so people, getting things done could take a while. I was the boss, but I had to make sure everyone was happy. They knew what was going to happen to the site, etc. I kind of felt like the, the standalone, I kind of like the standalone brand side of branch now. Any other comments? Well, that, that again is a purely from a brandable point of view and uh, purely marketing. SEO wise, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can you can rank both. It just depends. Um, there are a lot of other things here involved, like uh, customer intention and so on. And uh, honestly, I, I prefer the first one the brandside.com and I prefer each, each brand to be a separate domain just because um, that way the customers know exactly where they're going and uh, what they want to buy there. And uh, you're sending a much direct message to the to the person who is on the site. You can build better brands and um, you can aim it better to a different, uh, to, the, to the specific target group that is going to be on the site because each brand can be targeting different uh, different uh, 
let's say one could be for uh, teenage males, the other could be for uh, grandmas. And um, they should be set up in different ways. They should be, I mean, the brand should talk to the customer in, in a different uh, language. So that's why I prefer the, the first one. Thank you, George. Yeah, I totally agree. I guess, I guess it was, I guess it would depend on what type of brand, but it makes complete sense, you know, especially when they're different. I mean, it's like Coca-Cola is Coca-Cola. We all know Coca-Cola, but Coca-Cola also also owns parts of parts of Walker's Crisps. It's like I wouldn't then search Walker's Crisps and expect to see Coca-Cola because ninety percent of people don't even realize it's owned by them. Or or Capella Apple Juice is also owned by Coca-Cola. It's like if I want to search for the apple juice. I would probably see a bit weird if I saw it on a Coca-Cola domain. I'd be like, whoa, no, I'm, I'm looking for something healthy, not something crap. Um, and people, you know, sometimes they don't want those brands revealed or those brand connections revealed anyway. Um, so in that instance, I, I would certainly like with George and, 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 and I would go with the, that actual brand unless they're very, very similar. But I would, uh, for a brand, I would keep it branded, yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right, so I think this is our last question. Garland Stepanov asked a question titled, Content Depth to Increase Your Rankings. Garland said, hi, guys. I'm curious to know um, what do you think about these points? One. Uh, we have a page in position 35 and decided to rewrite from scratch. Um, will it uh, rank better or worse? Um, we have a theory that in Google's eyes, this is completely new content, uh, which can hurt page ranking. No, well, so firstly, if, if you're going to rewrite something, do it on the same URL, unless you change the URL. If you didn't do it on the URL, then 301 redirect, okay, to, to the other URL. The other thing I'm going to think here is if you're on 35 and you rewrote it, well, you haven't told us where it appeared next. I don't believe in, like, you know, rewriting something is going to take you from page three to page, like, position one. Um, because unless... Uh, you see, I mean, without giving us the, it's quite difficult. You know, did you only include, did you only include a small paragraph on what you are actually looking at in position wise? Or are you rewriting it all to do with that particular thing? Um, so I, I don't think rewriting your content is going to take you from page, page three to, to page one. Um, It may do. depends on depends on what what everyone else has done there. You may actually need to rewrite it so that it's it's uh, it's structured better. It reads better, um, and then create additional content to then feed into that to actually on all the 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 other subjects around it to 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 provide context. Um, to all of that particular page that you're trying to rank for, um, just rewriting it. I don't. I really, really don't think it's going to take it from 35 to position one, unless you haven't told us that actually we only wrote some really crappy paragraph, and it was on position 35, and now we're going to take it. You know, we're going to really put some effort into it. Uh, then it may actually do a bit of jumping. But if you're essentially just restructuring it slightly and, and, and maybe doing something else with that, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna go from there to there. You need to look at what other people have done and how can you present it in a better way. Is there any other additional content around it that you need to build to lead into that page to really push it upwards? Um, yeah, I mean, there's tons of things there on, uh, Tons of questions there. Yeah. All right. A anyone else? 
You see, we've just been joined by Micah Fisher Kirshner uh, from the East Coast of the USA. Okay, so I think this is a good question. Uh, pro probably the one that I like the most here from, from those. Uh, and uh, content depth is something that people uh, really underestimate and um, don't put in their um, content strategies. And uh, I don't think, I think that a lot of people don't understand it actually. And the uh, content depth is not uh, how long your page is. I mean, a lot of people think that uh, you get to write like 5,000 words page and it will rank automatically. Well, that's not the case. I have done a few experiments and uh, it really works very well. So this is how I built all my content right now. And um, OK, a simple version of it, what I can tell you and uh, what works really well, you, you should test it as well. Uh, see how it works for you. It's, uh, let's say if you want to rank for the best vacuums, let's say, just open Google and uh, type in best vacuums and then go ahead and see and get all that headings that pop up in each page and uh, put them in a te text document and uh, then see what overlaps and remove that. And you have a text document with a lot of headings that are pretty much everything else, everything that ranks on page one. And uh, you will he here you have uh, a lot of questions, a lot of uh, stuff that the vacuums are good for. Uh, also, we have, let's say, 20 different models from all the pages combined. And then uh, go ahead, go to answer the public, get some questions from there, answer the those questions as well. Um, make that page and that pretty much says to Google that you answer to all that information that people may be looking for and to related terms that are um, also searched by people who, who, who look for best vacuum. And uh, this gives to your page a lot of relevancy and uh, it really works very well in the search. And uh, it's not necessarily how long the page is, but how many of those topics you have touched. And uh, I have experimented actually with uh, just put the headings there and then put copy pasted content with, you know, just spun content with little keywords, nothing fancy. And that really ranks very well. You will be surprised how well that ranks. And uh, this just proved to me that Google cannot read your text and your semantics, but it reads um, the relevancy of your content to everything else that ranks right now. And if it's better, it just puts it and ranks it better. So thank you, George. Yeah, on my end, usually I'm of the view that you know Google knows kind of well, for the most of the time um, what users want uh, by showcasing what's ranking. Um, and when it comes to the content side, at least, you know, one of the things you can do is compare and contrast your content versus the competitor's ranking. Uh, so, kind of as mentioned, you're breaking down what's the fundamental commonalities between the ranking articles. You want to make sure at a minimum that you're covering those points because essentially what that, that entails is you're, you're fundamentally answering the question or the search of what somebody is looking for. Um, so by kind of at least to, to point one here, um, rewriting from scratch versus kind of tweaking, it, it's really more of a matter, and in length, it's more of a matter of what's the commonality of articles that are ranking, um, and are you covering the points that, it, minimally at least, covering the same or similar points that everybody else has. Now, on top of that, of course, you want to have some kind of unique area, what makes you different, et cetera. Um, but really, kind of the question should be, you know, from the relevance, from the theme, from the topics of, of what people are writing about for that problem, that question, query, are you actually answering that? And that, that's kind of the, the fundamental thing. And it, it's not from 
necessarily like your opinion of what you think uh, the answer is, but kind of the collectiveness of what users actually find to be the right answer. And that's usually you can kind of see as what is showing up. Thank you, Micah. All right, any more on this one? Okay, I think it's that time again. Yes, so it is. Um, look, um, we're not live streaming at the moment, so we don't have any active eyes online, but I'm sure someone will be watching this uh, um, at a later time, and we thank you for that. Uh, your interest in what we do uh, makes what we do worthwhile, and, and for that, uh, we're most grateful. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but for now, it's uh, good night. And again, thank you.